All right, so in this demonstration here, uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how to st secure your SSH server using best practices. And for this demonstration, I have a uh, Debian Linux machine running OpenSSH. Right now, we're sitting at the just after installation, default configuration, everything like that. And we're going to be accessing this from a Windows machine running PuTTY. And PuTTY, for those of you who don't know, is just a uh, piece of software that allows you to, uh, it's, it's an SSH client, so it allows you to connect up to your SSH server. So, uh, right here, we'll just, to start off, we'll just check the status of the SSH service. And by default, it turns it on right after installation. So, we'll go to our Windows machine, and we'll open up PuTTY. We'll enter in our IP address, which I already have loaded up here, and default port of 22, and we'll go ahead and we'll open it up. It says log in as, and then we'll go ahead and we'll log in as root. And we'll enter our password. And we just logged in as root. And that, um, that's bad. That's the, we definitely don't want to be able to log in as root from anywhere. Um, uh, on SSH uh, because every Linux machine has by default a root account and that's just bad news if you can brute force the root account because obviously root can do everything so yeah you don't uh, you definitely don't want that so we'll go ahead and we'll log out here we'll hop back over to the Linux machine and uh, so the directory I'm in right now is slash etsy slash ssh and that is the location of your ssh configuration files and we'll ls that and as you can see we have ssh underscore config and then sshd underscore config and the one we want to edit is sshd underscore config and another thing I want to point out um, I already made a backup of the SSH sshd config file because worst comes to worst we can just copy this over rewrite everything and we're back to square one so we always want to have a backup configuration file of of the f the initial configuration of it. So we'll go ahead and we'll um, edit the sshd file uh, sshd config file. And you can use um, any any uh, text editor for this, so nano or vi or whatever. So we're in the uh, ssh uh, configuration file here, and what we're going to look for to disable the root logon is this line right here under authentication says permit root logon yes and we're just going to change that to no and we'll write that file and just for demonstrational purposes I'll hop back to the Windows machine right away and we'll go ahead and we'll try to log in as root again and it will allow us to log in I just want to demonstrate that for you so as you can see here, we uh, just were allowed to log in, but we edited the configuration file. So what we need to do first is we need to uh, <coughs> we need to restart the service in order for that new configuration change to take effect. And there's two ways. To, uh, there's two ways to do it. You can either restart the the whole machine, or uh, you can just restart the service. So by typing that, we'll do service ssh restart, and that restarts the service. And then we'll go back and try to log in as root. And when we do, we get access is denied. And it's a good thing that it shows the password because then you don't know that it's disabled. So you can go ahead and brute, brute force it all you want. You'll never get in. So that's good. So next thing we want to do um, and this will greatly avoid the script kitties. Um, what we'll want to do, because by default, SSH listens on port 22. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to change that to another port. And then when, and then, you know, when the, like I said, when the script kitties co come by and knock on port 22, it's going to look at it as closed and then they're just going to register that as they don't have SSH running when in reality you have it running just on some weird port and I recommend putting it on some some weird high port um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll uh, edit the configuration file again and right up at top it uh, says port uh, the port IPs protocols that they're listening for is port 22 it's as simple as changing that to some other uh, s some other port number 
we will write that file, restart the service, and we'll go ahead and we'll just try to log, uh, we'll, we'll try to connect up via port 22, and connection is refused. So, that says that there's no SSH service running but what we'll try to uh, what we'll do instead is uh, you know on port 22 obviously so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and type in the port that we changed it to open it up and now we got our login prompt so that uh, doesn't change any functionality of the service it just changes the port that it listens on and I'll just make this okay so now we're going to avoid the script kitties. We're not going to be able to log in as root. But so let's say your 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 Linux machine has 800 users. And only 5 need to log in. And so so what we can do, we can either uh we we can either or both, we can add a specific user or users individually to be able to log in or we can allow a specific group to log in. So you can make a group, add users to it, and then permit that group to log in via SSH and they will be able to to log in. And you can also blacklist too. So uh, you can whitelist five users or you can blacklist five users. Let's say everyone needs to log in via SSH except for Steve. And well, we will um, blacklist Steve's account by um, by editing that configuration file so we'll go back to our Linux machine and we'll go down to the authentication underneath strict mode what you want to do we're gonna we're gonna want to whitelist the user Bob so we have user Bob on this system so we will type in allow users space and then that's Bob and then let's say we wanted to have Bob and Kyle log in. So then we'll do Bob and Kyle. So for now, we'll just do Bob. And it's allow users. You on users is capital. And the A on allow is capital as well. That does make a difference. So we will save that. Restart the service. So now root can't log in. So, so, so root still can't log in. And then we're going to try to log in as Bob. So we can log in as Bob. So what happens when we try to log in as Kyle? Same message we got from same message we got from trying to log in as root access is denied so now only Bob Bob is literally the only account that can log in from SSH so that uh, I mean if you don't need to give access why give access so definitely definitely do that so and now what we'll do we'll want to allow Bob and Kyle to log in So we'll just do Bob space Kyle. Write that out. You start the service. And we're able to log in. So we've now permitted those two. And you can do the same thing. Um, b with denying a user. So you can hit uh, instead of instead of typing allow users. And then the usernames, you can put deny users, uh, capital D on deny, and then the same uh, username, space, username, space, username. And you can also do deny groups or allow groups. And it's, it, it's groups with an S even if you have one group or, or multiple. So um, now only those two users can log in via, uh, via SSH. So that is, uh, you know, that is definitely good what we want. Okay, the last thing we'll go through is enabling key-based authentication and disabling password authentication via SSH. So what that's doing is that's not allowing any user to log in with their system password, and they'll have to uh, instead present the server with a private key that matches a public key out on the server and have the password to decrypt the private key. I find the best way to do this is remotely um, through PuTTY. 
it's just a little easier to deliver the key to the server. So what uh, we just log in as one of the authorized SSH users. We use the su command to get to root. Even though root access is disabled to log in via SSH, we're able to still use the su command to gain access to the root account, which is a good thing. So we're going to uh, edit the SSH configuration file. And we're going to look for a few lines here. We're going to go to the authentication. We're going to make sure that RSA authentication and public key authentication are both set to yes. Then this should be, they should be. And then this is going to be commented out, the authorized keys file. And that is uh, pretty much just telling the SSH service where the public key is going to be stored. And these are all going to have to be created on a per user basis. So because this is saying the user who's trying to log in their home directory dot SSH slash uh, uh, authorized keys. So you will need to make the dot SSH directory under each user's home directory and then the authorized keys under that for each user that needs to log in. So we'll just go ahead and we'll uncomment that. And then we'll want to take this uh, Th this line that says password authentication yes for uh, uh, and it'll say change uh, you know change no to disable clear t uh, untunneled clear text password we're gonna get rid of the comment there and we're gonna change it to no and what that's gonna do is that's gonna disable any user to log in with their system password so we're gonna save that file and we are in Kyle's home directory And we're going to make the authorized keys file. And then we're going to open up Putty Gen, which can be downloaded where you get Putty. And then we just need to move our mouse in here to generate some salts in the um, in the key that we're creating. And we're generating both a public key and a private key pair. So here it gives us our public key. All we do... is we copy and right click to paste that into our uh, putty window and that delivers the uh, the, S uh, the the public key to the server and it does it through SSH so it go gets over there secure and, and all that so then we just make a password for the uh, private key and then we save the private key We'll just save it to our desktop. So we have our private key here. And then if this file does end up getting corrupt, you can generate another public key from the private key. So as long as you have the private key um, and, and something goes wrong on the server, uh, you can always uh, dump that back on there. So we're going to write that file. Uh, restart the SSH service which still doesn't kick us out so we're still using the old configuration for this particular um, uh, session but once we exit the root account and log out that session is closed so any new sessions are going to be with the, the new configuration so we'll just open up putty here and then we'll configure it to pull in our SSH key private key open on that uh, actually we'll have to do that again because we didn't load it and then we'll open it up log in as user Kyle and then it gives us the authenticating with public key and then it gives us this and it's asking us for the passphrase for that key so type the password, and we are able to log in. That is different from our password. It should be different from our system password. So the password we have to log in um, when we have uh, when we have direct access to the machine should be different than the, than the password that's put on this private key. 
And then this private key should definitely be stored in a safe location, um, possibly in an encrypted database. So you, you have to decrypt the database, then you can open the key. Uh, th th there's a million and a half ways you can, uh, but you, you just want to keep that key safe because that's really, if, if you're able to get access to the key and then decrypt the key, you're able to log in. So what we'll try to do now, just to show you what's going to happen if we just try to log in without the key, I'm going to try to log in as Kyle. And then it gets the disconnect and no supported authentication method is available. So that's what you'll get when you're trying to log in and you don't have the key. Also, if we're trying to log in with the key that we put under uh, Kyle's user directory, and we're trying to... I forgot to pull that up again. And we're trying to log in as Bob. It, 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 it should give us the same, the same message. So we're going to use Bob. And we're going to use the key for, the, for Kyle. And we get the same thing. Uh, the server refuses the key because it looks in Bob's home directory. It looks for that .ssh folder and looks for that authorized keys file. If it doesn't exist... Well, then it, it, it'll refuse the key. If it does exist and it's the wrong key, it'll, it'll, it'll kick it out as well. So, uh, it, and that's, that's an added feature so you don't, have to, um, <laughs> you don't have to give one key for the whole system. It's a per user, per user basis gets the key. Typically, those four steps is all that I will do on my SSH servers. Um, I have a few of them here um, at home that I use. Biggest things, I disable the root login, change the default port, limit users and groups, and enable key-based authentication, and that really locks it down as secure as I need to get. Um, you can install software uh, such as fail to ban, which when configured will uh, uh, go by IP address, and if there's uh, too many failed uh, attempts to log in, it'll block out your IP address. Um, the only thing is it, it doesn't work so well on uh, distributed uh, uh, brute force attacks because if there's 5,000 IP addresses hitting your server well, and you have it configured to lock out after five, well, then each 5,000 of those IP addresses gets five guesses before it gets locked out so that's definitely um, the lacking and uh, for fail to ban that's why we enable key based authentication that's why we limit the users and groups that's why we change the port so they can't even find it um, defense in depth is really where you have to go on this because like I say if, if you're able to get in and elevate to a root terminal at <laughs> Consider your server owned by somebody else. So um, that pretty much concludes this uh, uh, this um, demonstration on that. Uh, hopefully, it uh, will help you out, and uh, hopefully, you'll be able to lock down your SSH servers.